Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew, one of the Apostles. We've got a great devotion to St. Andrew, so I'm going to share some of what we know of St. Andrew, as well as how you and I can be like St. Andrew today. So Andrew was the first disciple called by Jesus. He was a fisherman by trade. It was a common profession. There was about 30 fishing towns all surrounding the Sea of Galilee. So it was a very common profession, sort of like saying someone that works for the government here in Ottawa. His brother was Simon, who later became Peter, the first pope. That was his brother. Andrew told Simon that he had found the Messiah. Andrew was filled with this enthusiasm. So what did he do? He went and told his brother about Jesus and brought him to encounter him. Thanks to Andrew, Simon Peter met Jesus and was able to follow him, becoming, as we know, the leader of the apostles, the first pope. Andrew had great trust and faith in Jesus. When you think of the experience we just heard in Matthew's Gospel, Andrew left his work, his home, his family, his profession to follow Jesus. And he did it immediately, without hesitation. He did it immediately, without hesitation. He was a simple man, not known for many words. Andrew was never quoted in the Bible. Andrew later preached the gospel, though, in Scotland and Greece. In fact, he's the patron of Scotland. Andrew was later crucified on a cross. It took two days for him to die on the cross. And he preached the good news about Jesus even unto his last breath. There's two key passages that we hear about St. Andrew. The first one was from today's reading. Key emphasis I would mention on that is how immediately he left everything when Jesus called him. The other passage is John chapter 1, verse 35. There, John the Baptist points out to his two followers at the time, Andrew and John, who would later write one of the Gospels. Andrew and John were with John the Baptist. And that's when John the Baptist saw Jesus, who came for baptism, and he pointed him out. And he said, Behold, behold the Lamb of God. He pointed out to Andrew and to John that this was the long-awaited Messiah. They go to Jesus and they ask him an interesting question, where are you staying? His response is simple, come and see. Trust me, come and see. After they encounter Jesus, they go and tell their brothers. Andrew goes to Simon Peter and John goes to, to James. So now their group of two doubled. They brought their brothers. So how are you and I a little bit like St. Andrew, either individually, personally, or even as a parish community and family? Well, we are called, we are chosen by Jesus to be his followers. That's why we're here. We're called from our regular lives, whatever that may be. Jesus calls ordinary people from wherever we are in our state in life. We become fishers of people, fishers of people just like Andrew. Many of us are Catholic because of someone else. Many of us know Jesus because of someone else. Someone else fished and brought us to Jesus. Similarly, we are called to do the same. We think about baptism. Often it's a parent or a grandparent or godparent that encourages us to be baptized. That enthusiasm, that witness of maybe a parent or a grandparent is how we start off our faith life. But we are called to call other people as well. So how can you and I be more like Andrew? How can we be more like St. Andrew? Well, first, I'm going to suggest that we respond immediately, just like he responded immediately, with trust. With trust in Jesus, with enthusiasm that he did. He trusted Jesus by leaving things immediately, and his enthusiasm moved him to go find his brother and bring him to Jesus. He was in this invitation to a relationship. Jesus invited him into a relationship. Similarly, you and I are invited to a relationship with Jesus, and hopefully we say yes. Andrew made time to get to know Jesus. He put his work aside, he put everything else aside to get to know Jesus. So how can we do that in a practical way? 
we can put aside some time for Jesus. We can put aside five minutes a day to read maybe one chapter in the Bible every day. Get to know Jesus. He made time in terms of prayer. We can do that in terms of maybe grace at meals or bookends of our day. We wake up, we start off with prayer, we go to bed, we end with prayer. Sacraments, practicing the sacraments. We're here today to celebrate the Eucharist. But the same thing goes for things like monthly confession. This is the time of year where I think a lot of people are getting their winter tires put on. And Personally, I went and got an oil change at the same time since it was roughly that time. We do these things to upkeep and preserve the life of our cars. But what do we do to preserve and upkeep the life of our soul? Monthly confession is one of those possible suggestions. Like Andrew, we can invite others to meet Jesus. We can invite other people, just like Andrew went and got his brother, Simon. We can do the same with people. But this shows our enthusiasm in terms of being disciples. Like Andrew, you and I are called, called to be fishers of people, meaning that we bring Jesus, we bring people to Jesus. And we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to live this calling as a disciple of Jesus? Who is the St. Peter that you or I are called to invite to meet the Messiah? Who knows, you may be inviting a future saint, a future pope, future leader of the church. You never know what will become of someone else's journey with Jesus. The important thing is, is to invite them. Take someone to Mass with us. Take someone to Mass with us. It's important for me, it's important for you. That's sort of the, the way you can sell it to them. Come see what's important to me. Come and see. Notice the same words. Could be a spouse at home. Could be a brother, a sister, parent, cousins, in-laws, friends at school, at work, wherever it may be. It doesn't matter. If it's important to us, it's something to share. Now some of you may be thinking, that sounds nice, Father Matthew, but I've tried and it doesn't work. Yes, I, I can read thoughts. I've tried, it doesn't work, they don't care. He doesn't listen, she doesn't listen, they're too busy. We need the same enthusiasm that St. Andrew had. Where is our trust? Where is our enthusiasm? Where is our faith in God? In his power to transform lives. His power to work miracles in anyone's heart. We often do well to tell someone about a great deal. Maybe we got at a store. It's a great sale going on. Maybe there's good cheap gas just down the road. We'll tell people about that, won't we? Or, hey, there's a half-priced iPad or tablet or big screen TV. You got to go and go get it. We tell people about sports games or highlights that we saw. Hey, you got to see this. Can you believe they came back from a 3-1 deficit? But we need to put all this into perspective. Sometimes we need to be reminded, put things into perspective. We're talking about God. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about eternal life and death. You think Andrew, Peter, and all the other disciples never came across someone who wouldn't listen? They sure did. They ran across people who didn't care, who thought that the good news of Jesus Christ was a waste of time, it's not important, they're too busy. But did that stop Andrew? Did that stop Peter from telling them about God's love, from bringing them to inviting them? Not at all. Both Andrew and Peter were crucified on a cross. And they, did, they were because they were telling people about Jesus. And they did it joyfully. They embraced their cross joyfully. We too must be joyful and enthusiastic proclaim the good news of the gospel to everyone we meet through our words and our actions. So they say there is something different about that person. I'd like to leave you with some of the last words of St. Andrew. When he was crucified, he was tied to a cross to die for spreading the good news. He didn't complain or have any regrets about his efforts to lead people to Jesus. Not at all. In fact, when he was hanging on the cross, other people would come and give him food, water, talk to him to ease some suffering, to comfort him in these difficult last moments. What would he do? He'd tell them more stories about Jesus Christ. That's why he's shown in art, I brought my statue, with a cross, with a cross. Because Andrew embraced his cross. He embraced the cross. 
When Andrew was given his cross to carry before being crucified, some of his words were, and I quote, O good cross, made beautiful by the limbs of Christ, so long have I desired this cross. Now I am so happy it has found me. Receive me into your arms and present me to my master so that Jesus, who redeemed me through his cross, may now accept me from this cross. Any disciple of Jesus Christ finds true happiness in following Jesus completely and spreading the good news. Their enthusiasm and trust in God always inspires and is contagious. So today, let us be inspired by Andrew's example of faith to learn more about our faith and be more trusting and courageous to share that faith with everyone we meet.